Hey guys, welcome back. I'm excited for this video because I realize that I've never done anything like this before. I wanna talk about life lessons and I wanna give you six life kind of skills or lessons that I learned that I wish I had learned growing up. And I do think though there are some things that you just have to go through for sure. But these are the six really big ones that, man, if I would've known this stuff, my life would have been way different. Okay, the first thing is going to be how to emotionally take care of yourself. Half of the reason why I even started my coaching practice was because when I kind of discovered like self-parenting, I broke it down because I wanted to understand how do you really take care of yourself? Like how do you love yourself? What does that look like? What is self-love? And not just being like fluffy things like, oh, go for a run and make time for yourself to read a book. And those things are important, of course, but really like go deep with it. like. How do I overcome codependency? How do I be healthy? How do I respond, not react? So for me, learning how to emotionally take care of myself was probably one of the biggest things and it, it wasn't anything even close to anything that I was even taught growing up. So what does it mean to emotionally take care of yourself? How do I validate myself? How do I soothe myself? How do I really know what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling. And now that right there might seem really basic and simple to you, but there are so many people walking around, you probably have done it at some point, that you don't really know how you feel and you don't know what you need. And even if you do, do you actually give it to yourself? So that right there, taking care of myself in that way, learning how to validate and soothe and do all those things, um, yeah, no, no one sat me down and had that conversation of what that should look like and how to do it for myself. Quite frankly, I think a lot of us, not only did no one teach that to us, but no one even just gave that to us at all. So it's one thing if your parents give it to you, it's another thing if they know how to teach it to you as well. Because at some point, mom's not gonna be around to validate you. Uh, at some point, dad's not gonna always be there to soothe you when you feel uncomfortable or sad or scared or worried. And so how do you do that for yourself? I think the next real big life lesson that I wish I would have learned is how do I stay connected to myself? How do I stay in tune with myself? So what does Stephanie feel? What does Stephanie need? And we kind of touched on that a little bit in the last one, but this is where we really like embrace ourselves on like a soul level. Like, why am I here? What are my strengths? What makes me who I am? So when you're able to answer those really deep questions and when you make that like a fundamental practice in your life, your life be is just different. It goes into a different direction. So we're bred, especially in the West, to look at life as achievement of having things. I should go to college. So we're, we're breeded we're bred in certain ways to have a certain way of thinking. And we're not really stopping to say, well, what do I, how do I feel about that? Like, do I want to do that? Like, there's no real connection inside here to know who this soul is and have me know how do I bring my essence, what I'm here to actually do out into the world. We're just trained to be sheep, to all be doing the same thing. and. And if we try to like go astray and do something that's out of the you know road of what the norm is, we're looked down upon, we're frowned upon, we're we're scolded, we're someone's telling us that like that can't happen or it's gonna be too hard to happen or money grows on trees or whatever that looks like, right? Or that that's not gonna make you happy long term, or ooh, it's really hard to become, you know, a professional baseball player or whatever. So we're not really taught how to be in touch with this and how to stay connected with this. I know for sure, right off the bat, if I would have known those two things, very, very, very important things, my life would have been totally different. I don't regret anything, and I know you probably would say the same as well, perhaps, maybe, um, but I definitely know that I would not have gone to college. I would have not made some of the decisions that I made because I know I made them out of fear and not made them on knowing myself really well and knowing what it is that I want for myself. I don't think you need life experience in order to do that if you know how to really hone in on you and have your have have that real connection with yourself. I don't think you need to like go through the trenches in order to really understand yourself. I think it's more of a practice of someone teaching you how to fully accept who you are. Okay, number three. Man, this is a biggie. And it's one that 
A lot of us do not learn, we don't see it, we don't hear anything about it, it's not displayed well for us, and that is what does a healthy relationship look like? What does it mean to be in a relationship with another person, not just a romantic relationship, but also a friendship? What does it mean to have a healthy relationship with another person? What should that dialogue look like? What are the key factors of a healthy relationship? How should I operate in a healthy relationship? How does someone else operate in a healthy relationship? Mm, yeah, I didn't take that class, so I must have missed <laughs> I must have missed that enrollment because didn't learn anything about that. Definitely didn't have always the best examples, and I think this has nothing to do with divorce. You know, people years ago it was, oh my God, my kids are, you know, they come from divorce and they're scarred. No, 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 no. Because I know plenty of people that grew up with both parents living in the household and you yeah, know, they still have the same stuff that they're dealing with that I dealt with. So divorce has nothing to do with it. You could have both parents in the house and one's narcissistic and one's codependent and they just stayed married forever. So. The length of time on a relationship doesn't mean anything. The quality of the relationship is what you're really looking at. So mom and dad not you know, spending 50 years together really means nothing if you never saw mom and dad be in a healthy relationship. Number four, how to forgive. No one taught me how to forgive. I mean, I definitely came from a lot of people in my family that they don't forgive. <laughs> they don't like to um, because they look at it as this person is getting away with something and their ego won't let them forgive. So forgiveness, I never understood anything about it. I didn't understand why you do it. Um, how is it beneficial? Um, I didn't, you know, even understand, no one talked about ego, like that wasn't a thing. So there wasn't a real deep sense of spirituality in the house where we learned about our egos and how to rise above and why forgiveness is important and et cetera, et cetera. Why people do what they do, don't take things personally. Those were not conversations that I heard growing up. Those were not fundamental things that I learned quite frankly, until I went through my divorce. And guess what? I learned all these things. Yay! <laughs> so it's not like, well, I learned this one in my 20s. No, we, we hit all six of these like real, real quick. So I got the rush course on all of this. Okay, so forgiveness was definitely one that I didn't know how to do. And I wish I would have, because uh, I think it would have really helped me Think about it, if I know how to do number one, basically how to emotionally take care of myself. So I'm going to learn how to soothe myself, to validate myself, to not judge myself, to accept myself, et cetera, et cetera. Then I would have probably processed how I felt when I was hurt or disappointed or let down or experienced something that was uncomfortable. So when I was little, obviously, I couldn't do that for myself. So I was supposed to get someone to help me to at least honor how to do that. So someone was supposed to be in front of me mirroring that. Didn't get that um, to, to, its, to its fullest, right? I think for the most part, I, I would hope mom and dad aren't scolding you every single time you're actually feeling an emotion, but are they also talking you through the process to learn how to deal with your emotions? And then are they teaching you how to do it for yourself as you get older? So I digress, but if I would have known how to do that and if I would have understood forgiveness, I definitely wouldn't have carried some of the baggage from my past into my present. Okay, number five, now we're starting to get like really into this. So how to not emotionally react. If I know how to hold on to myself emotionally, if I understand and I fully accept all of my emotions that they're mine and my feelings that are mine and I understand my mind and I understand self-parenting, that when someone comes at me and they do hurt me, it doesn't mean I'm not gonna feel, okay? Let's just like, you know, keep it real for a second. It's not, we're not gonna not be a human being, but, after I feel those normal human things that are necessary, because you are human, what do I do? How do I, if I know how to take care of myself emotionally, then when my emotions are really heightened, then I'm going to understand that from that high place where I'm erratic, where I'm really upset, even you know anything that's at a high level, then I'm not going to ever respond. I'm always going to just lash out and react. So the last thing, and it kind of ties into a little bit of everything, but learning how to own it all. Learning how to own my uncomfortable feelings, that they're mine, that they're not someone else's, 
knowing what to do with those uncomfortable feelings. Then we go back to step one and learning how to emotionally take care of myself. Learning how to emotionally take care of yourself cannot happen until you fully own everything. So even now with my own son, he's eight, and when he feels something, I allow him to feel it. And I let him know that those are his emotions. And he had, and you know, let's learn, let's talk about, let's figure out how to handle them. And obviously as he gets older, the conversation and, and everything will look a little bit differently. But even right now, I'm always asking him, what do you think you should do with this emotion? What do you think you should do with this feeling? And it just starts to get the wheels turning that is he is going to learn how to actually do this by himself. And so sometimes he'll say, I don't know. And sometimes he'll say, well, I'm gonna sit and just talk to that little voice for a second. And sometimes he's already trying to self-soothe himself so I can see that the wheels are turning and we're heading in the right direction. But this is parenting over the course of many, many years still. Obviously, he's only eight years old. But can you imagine how healthy you would be if you knew how to do all of these things by yourself? Now, I always stress this. All of these things you're not going to be able to do for yourself all the time just by yourself. I mean, therapy and coaching and best friends and relationships we wouldn't need any of those things if you were just so equipped to be able to do all of this all by yourself but if you can do it majority of the time you are mentally healthy you are emotionally healthy you are a healthy human being and other problems you know like insecurity and depression and anxiety like none of those things mental health wouldn't be what it is today if we all knew how to do these things so I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you some insight. Please comment down below which life lessons do you think have been the most beneficial for you? And I'll see you guys in the next video.